We come now, right now, Lord, first of all, thank you. We thank you, Father, for you allowed us to see another day. We thank you, Father, for you've kept us in the palm of your mighty hand all week. We thank you, Lord, for you protected us from danger seen and unseen. You've kept us in such a way, Lord, that we can be here right now thanking you for all that you've done for this past week. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Father, for we know that there are some that didn't wake up this morning. We thank you, Lord, we know there are some that are suffering with illness and malady of life right now, Father. We thank you, Lord, for we know there are some that don't have food to eat this morning, Lord. There are some that don't have shelter right now, Lord. And so we thank you, Father, for everything that you've done for us. You put food on our table. You put clothes on our back. You shelter us, provided for us, Lord. And it all came from you. So for that, we're thankful. And Lord, we ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you just have your way right now in this service, Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us right now, Lord. For we need you right now more than ever. Yes, God. We need you, Lord, right now more than ever. So we just ask, Lord, that you just have your way right now in this service, at this time, at this point in time, not only here in this church, yes. but all over the world, Lord. Yes, God. Everyone that is listening right now in the sound of my voice, everyone who desires to hear a word from you, we ask, Lord, that you show yourself strong right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let us know, Lord, that it doesn't matter what's happening around us. It doesn't matter how strong the wind blows. It doesn't matter how high the waves crash. We know, Lord, that you're still God and that you're God all by yourself and that there's nothing too hard for you, Lord. And so we ask, Father, that you clear our hearts and clear our minds so that we can receive your word more fully today. We ask, Lord, that you touch Pastor Jeff from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord, that you drench him in the word in such a way, Lord, that the word comes forth and that it pierces every heart that hears your word that comes forth today, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for you are the only way that we can get through this treacherous and dangerous time, Father. Yes. Only through you, Lord, that we can make it each and every day, Father. So we just ask, Lord, that you continue to order our steps. Mm. Oh, Lord, we know, Lord, that yours, when you order our steps, Father, that we're righteous. That when you order our steps and we follow, Lord, that we're doing the right thing that you'll have us to do. Yes. In this day and time, Father, we yes. need your order right now more than ever. Yes, we need your intervention right now more than ever. And so yes. we ask, Lord, that you just continue to have your way. Continue to touch. Continue to rule. Continue to reign, Father. And we'll be mindful, Father, to give you the glory, honor, and praise. We'll be mindful, Lord, to follow the way that you'll have us to go. We'll be mindful, Father, to speak the words that you have us to speak. We'll be mindful, Father, to draw closer to you as you draw closer to us, Father, so that we can live a life that's pleasing in your sight. And so we just ask, Father, that you just have your way. And for the men that are here, yes, Lord. within the sound of my voice, Lord, I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you touch each and every one right now, Father. I ask, Lord, that you just open their hearts and their spirits so that they can that they can receive you more fully, Father, so they can be men of valor for you, Lord, yes. they can be men of God for you, Lord, yes. that they can lead their households in such a way, Father, that you smile down from heaven looking at what they're doing, Lord, yes. because they're doing the thing that you have them to do. Hallelujah. And we'll be mindful, Lord, to give you the glory, honor, and Hallelujah. praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Somebody give God praise right now. Somebody give God praise right now. Hallelujah. You can do better than that. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Somebody give God praise right where you are right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is moving. God is having his way. And we give him glory. We give him praise. I want to welcome everybody to Freedom Movement Church. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We are so excited about what God is doing and what he has in store in our hearts and our lives today like never before. Listen, on behalf of myself, Pastor Jeff Twiggs, beautiful wife Teresa, the whole Freedom Movement family, we just want to welcome you and we just believe that God is going to speak to your heart like never before today. 
Listen, if you are in Georgia, if you're in the Atlanta area, we are at 1148 JBL Court, Marietta, Georgia. And we would love to have you to, to come down. Hallelujah. That you will continue to grow with us online. But if you wish to join Freedom Movement Church, whether you're in Georgia or you're in South Carolina or you're in Florida or Texas or South Africa, wherever you are, Amen. we would love to have you to be a part of this ministry. And we believe in God to move like never before. Can we do this before we even move forward? We give God praise for you. Can we give God praise for our men of God? Can we give God praise for our men of God? And it will be better than that. Let's give God praise. For the men of God. Jesus. Jesus. I thank God for my brothers. Uh, there's some powerful men of God at this church. The enemy is afraid when the men of God come together in agreement, filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, the enemy is so afraid because the men are standing in position where they are called to be. And I praise God uh, to have brothers that are real brothers that love God and that are kingdom focused. And that is going to be a major blessing in this time and in this moment. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go right to the word of God because I believe that there is a word that God wants to speak to us uh, today like never before. There's a word that God wants to speak to us. I believe it's for the time that you would open up your Bibles to the book of Luke. Open up your Bible to the book of Luke. Yes. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. Luke, chapter 4. Mm. And we're going to read verses 16 through 21. Luke, chapter 4, verses 16 through 21. You have to say amen. You don't have to say, hold up, preacher. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 21. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Amen. And it reads as follows. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, yes. to proclaim liberty to the captives, in recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today, somebody say today. today. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Amen, Pastor. Hallelujah. I want to talk for the next few minutes from this question. Mm -hmm. What are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you waiting for? Let's pray right now. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your spirit in this house. Lord, we ask that you would have your way like never before in the name of Jesus. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you, Lord God. Spirit of the living God, even use me. Fresh anointing. Fall fresh. That your word will go forth with boldness, with clarity, Lord God. It would accomplish the very thing that you have called it to do before the foundation of the world. We give you glory, we give you honor, we thank you for the transformation that's going to take place. We ask that you would uh, just make every eye uh, to see and every ear to hear, every heart to receive your word. Thank you for, in, uh, for uh, hindering every distraction, anything that comes against what you're trying to speak. 
that you will remove it right now in the name of Jesus, that we will receive the full counsel of your word in the name of Jesus. We thank you that the devil is defeated, and we thank you for what you're doing. We believe you right now to have your way. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, and praise in Jesus' name. People of God said amen. amen. What are you waiting for? There were a few people back on December 31st, 2019, who declared with confidence and conviction that 2020 was going to be your year. Is there somebody in here? You were at your watch night service. You had your catchy slogan and everything. 2020, that's the year of clear vision. And you had it all worked out and you had it all set up and you believe that 2020 was going to be different than 2019. Do I have a witness in here yet? Amen. There was somebody here that you went in, you couldn't wait because the Lord put some new things on your heart to do and you were convinced that 2020 was going to be off the chain and you were going to walk in your blessing in 2020. You were going to walk in victory in 2020. Things were going to turn around in your life in 2020. And everything was good in January of 2020. I ain't got no help yet. That's all right. <laughs> about February 2020, everything was all right. They were talking about some strange virus over there in China. And you said, we're going to pray for them over in China. But you was going to go ahead with your life. You were convinced that 2020 was going to be your year. And then March hit. <laughs> Anybody know what happened in March? They shut everything down. The coronavirus, uh, not only an epidemic that was in a few states, but a pandemic that was taking place all over the world. And now you said you were going to walk and you were focused, you were going to be on time at your job, and now you can't even go to work. And you got to a place where Time has passed and you're wondering what in the world is going on with the 2020. And then all of this racial injustice comes to a head right behind that. And now what seemed like was going to be your year was now a year that's met with chaos and confusion. Mm -hmm. Am I talking to somebody here? Amen. And the plans that you had, you and your, you and your wife was about to go on vacation. Now I can't go nowhere. Amen. About to celebrate your birthday, now I can't eat out. Mm. Somebody crying with me, amen. Somebody crying with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you thought it was going to be your year, but it's been met with disappointment. It's been met with pain. It's been met with agony. It's been met with things that you've never seen in your life. And somebody is disappointed with God. Somebody in this room, somebody watching is disappointed with God. And you said, Lord, you promised me that this was going to be the year that things turned around. I started giving my tithes and I started doing things right. Why are we dealing with so much in this time? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because here's what you've got to understand. The things that have taken place in 2020 in this world should not deter your destiny. Amen. But I believe that things that have taken place in 2020 should confirm your destiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, we, we don't I quite understand this. I believe that the things that have taken place have not derailed of the things that God was going to do because you understand whatever spoke, God spoke to your spirit in 2019, he was fully aware of the coronavirus. Amen. He was fully aware of all of these chaotic things that are taking place all at one time. He was fully aware. And the reason why you had such a heightened sensitivity and a feeling in your spirit that this was going to be your year, because truth be told, 2020 is your year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saying, but how can it be my year? I got furloughed. 
It is your year. You said, how could it be my year? I can barely go out without uh, having a risk of getting sick or passing away. How could it be my year? And God says, I've made it your year because I've blessed you with urgency. Mm -hmm. See, here's what you've got to understand. God, sometimes in the midst of taking you to the next level, he blesses you with a certain kind of urgency that can't allow you to sit still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes he allows you to have a certain kind of urgency that you can't procrastinate even if you wanted to. Sometimes he gives you a sense of urgency that the thing that you might have taken you eight months to get around to doing, you got to do it now. The thing that it might have took you a year to finally say you do it, you got to do it now. God says if I've got to take sports off the table to make you do it, if I've got to take eating out off the table to make you do it, if I've got to make you uncomfortable in your own environment to make you do it, I have blessed you with a sense of urgency and the things that have taken place have not denied your destiny, it's confirmed your destiny. Amen. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? Because for some of us, we would still be dragging our feet if some of this stuff didn't take place. Yeah. We would still be doing some of the same stuff that we're doing now. But there's somebody here that your prayer life went to the next level because of COVID-19. Somebody else is that your prayer life and your fasting went to another level because your finances got messed with. And when the devil thought he was knocking you off course, it was God all along that was pushing you forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So here's what we've got to do. We've got to stop pouting about what didn't happen and start praising about what God is making happen. Amen. We've got to stop being disappointed about how things didn't go, how we thought it was going to go. And praise God that thank you that things didn't go the way we wanted to go, but things went the way you wanted it to go. Because at the end of the day, there's a way that seems right to a man, but it leads to destruction. And you never know what kind of push we needed to walk in the urgency of the body of Christ that we needed to walk in. So somebody just needs to say thank you for the kick in the pants. Thank you for pushing me out of my comfort zone. Thank you for making me pray and fast because my life depended on it. Thank you for giving me this kind of sense of urgency because if we didn't have it, we might still be sitting there with TV with our remote in our hand. We still might be loafing and goofing all. But thanks be to God that he blessed the body of Christ with urgency. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And we're in a place that through everything that went on this year, this year is not over. Don't cancel it out and start praying about 2021 because truth be told, God has you right where he wants you. Amen. Amen. Woo, somebody say amen. amen. But here is the question that I hear God ask. The question that I hear him ask. He's not just asking you, he's asking me. The question is, what are you waiting for? How bad do things have to get in order for you to start moving on that calling? What else has to take place for you to finally get into that ministry he's called you to? What else needs to be take place for you to start that business that he's telling you to start? And he's asking, what are you waiting for? Because whatever God has put on your heart, it's time for you to do it now. Whatever he's put in your mind and set you out, you've got to do it now. Am I, am I talking to somebody here? Amen. Am I the only one that's feeling this urgency to move and get these things out? We've got to do it. We can't sit any longer because these are the last days and whatever is on your heart, it's time to do it now. Amen. Somebody say now. now. So there are three principles that you must know when you are asking this question, what are you waiting for? Please write these down. Write these down. We're going to get to the word in a second. But write this down. Hallelujah. The first thing that you have to understand, your time of waiting is a time of working. Mm. Let me say it again. Your time of waiting 
is a time of working. See, there have been some things, I'm talking to somebody yeah. right here in this room. I'm talking to somebody that's watching on Facebook Live. There have been some things that God told you he was going to do in your life. Make it plain, sir. There's vision that God put before you. And you heard it. Some people said, um, Lord, are you sure that's you were talking to me? Some some folks was like, I know, because I ain't know, I ain't never did that before. And it seemed real out there and real radical. That's because it was a God-sized idea. Mm -hmm. Somebody with a God-sized idea that you got two years ago, a year and a half ago, I'm talking to you right now. Your time of waiting is a time of working. Because sometimes God will tell you that he has something for you to do, but he'll say, not yet. Are y'all hearing me? Sometimes he'll say, not yet. But sometimes you have to understand that waiting is never a position of being completely still. I'm trying to help somebody here. Waiting is never a place when you are completely still. Here's what you've got to do. While you're waiting for the next move, you've got to prepare to walk in the next thing. If God has given you a vision, the first thing that you have to do is begin to work the vision. Who am I talking to? Because God is saying, yes, I'm calling you to this ministry, but not yet. I'm calling you to get married, but not yet. Yes. In your not yet is not a place of stagnancy. It's a place of working. So I need somebody to get and get busy, write the vision, make it plain, and work the vision. If you are going to walk in what God is waiting for you to move on, you've got to turn the TV off. Somebody got mad at Pastor right there. My episode coming on on Tuesday night, Pastor. Don't be talking about me like that. I appreciate it. I got to binge watch this thing on Netflix. Don't be talking about me like that. Yes, I'm talking about you because the time that you're catching up on your episodes is the time you can be reading that book that will prepare you to walk in the vision that God has yeah, for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. The time that we're sitting around is the time that we need to be on our face preparing, getting our business plan together, getting our ministry plan together. So while you're waiting on God, you've got to prepare to God to move. See, there's so many people that believe and pray, but they don't prepare. Y'all heard me say it many times. You've got to prepare for what you pray for. So this is the time now that when you've heard it, but you say, I don't have the resources yet, start preparing. When you've heard it and say, I don't have the team together yet, start preparing. When you heard it and say, I've never done that business, I've never started that ministry before, start preparing. Because this is the time where God gives you the vision, but don't wait till you have anything. You've got to start working that vision right now. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Your time of waiting is a time of working. Here's what we've got to do. If you know you are called to preach, but you haven't ex ex accepted the call, stay in the word and start writing sermons. Sometimes when you call to preach, he'll give you a sermon, but it's for you to preach to your co-workers, not to the yeah, church. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you saying this? Amen. We've got to get to a place as the people of God that we're always preparing. That way, we don't have time to complain to God about what we don't have. Yeah, yeah. We don't have time to complain. Where's my husband? Where's my wife? Nope. Thank you for not sending them. I'm preparing. I'm getting my heart right. I'm getting my mind right. I'm getting my stuff in order. I'm getting my finances together. So by the time you send what you have for me, I'll be ready to walk in it. Because you have to understand the thing that God is preparing you for is not just for you, it's for your generation. The big thing that God is preparing you for is not just for your personal blessing, but it's for you to be a blessing to people that are coming after you. And it's a critical thing because your obedience could mean somebody's salvation. Your obedience could mean somebody giving their life to Christ. Your obedience means that somebody will come out of the darkness into the marvelous light. So if you've got partial clarity, work that partial clarity that you got. If you only know three quarters of the vision, work the three quarters that you got and watch God bless you with the rest of it. I'm just trying to tell somebody that your time of waiting is a time of working. Amen. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Hallelujah. Are you hearing this? Yes, yeah. sir. 
Please understand, this is a very critical, critical thing. What are you waiting for? Point number two. Watch this. In order for you to walk in what God is calling you to walk in yes. in this season. Yes. In order, watch this, to walk in what God is calling you to walk in this season. Yes, sir. Write this down. Point number two. You can no longer tolerate what's familiar. Uh -oh. You can no longer tolerate what's familiar. What do you mean by what's familiar? Yes, sir. I'm glad you asked. Sometimes the thing that holds us back is not always big sin. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's small familiarity. Mm. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes the thing that holds us back is not that big thing that's calling us to fall, but it might be that familiar thing that's calling us not to move. Mm. Make it plain, sir. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. Please understand, you can no longer tolerate what's familiar. Many people read the word and pray and then wonder why God hasn't moved. Mm. Mm. And God says, yes, you've read the word and you pray, but I can't do something new because you're still walking in something old. See, the thing that comes with your prayer is your walk. Mm -hmm. Whatever you pray for, now you've got to walk in that path of what you pray for. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that how to do a new thing if you're not going to do nothing different? Mm -hmm. So here's what we've got to take an inventory of right now. What in your life is familiar. Mm -hmm. Is it your set of friends? That you the only one that's trying to get closer to God? Mm -hmm. Three years ago, y'all was rolling good. Y'all was hitting up the club together. Y'all was doing y'all thing, getting y'all drank on. Amen. Amen. But now you're a new creature. Old things have passed away. Mm -hmm. Behold, all things have become new. And now you want to stay home on Friday night and be alone with God instead of going out and getting your night overnight bag and going over Boo Boo House. You got there's a different thing that's taking place in your life, and sometimes the thing that tries to hold you back is what's familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Sometimes the thing that's holding you back is your own way of thinking. Amen, Pastor. Am I, am I preaching this? Amen. Sometimes it's the way that you're thinking. The way that you've always done things. But the Bible says, forget the former things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Yeah, yeah. See, what you're going to have to do where you're walking is a place where you have not been before. And it requires a new level of faith. Yeah. It requires a new level of trust. Yeah. You've got to be willing to launch out in the deep. Even if you can't swim, yeah. God will hold you up. And you cannot stay in what you used to do yeah. and where you used to go and who you used to see. Uh -huh. Because sometimes the thing that holds you back yeah. is not the voice of sin, it's the voice of familiarity. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Pastor. Make yeah. a play, sir. We've got to deal with the familiar sins, but we also got to deal with the familiar habits. Yeah. I'm trying to help somebody. On, and if we're going to get to destiny and we're going to get to purpose, we have got to do Something unfamiliar. Are you hearing this? Amen. So my question is, Lord, what is it in my life that needs to go? Because it's what I am now, and it's not speaking to where I'm going. Come on, Pastor. Amen. What things do I need to let go that speaks to what I used to be and not speaks to what I'm going to be? Yes. What are those things in my life that's a reminder of what was and is keeping me from what is to come? Amen. Yeah. We need some folk that's willing to launch out. If nobody will go with you, you will go by yourself. Yeah. It might be three of y'all or four of y'all. You, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. That might be all it has to take. Don't be waiting for folk to go with you because the familiar folk want you to stay where they are. Yeah. The familiar folk want you to be back in the usual. Yeah. The familiar folk don't want you to go out and do what God has called you to do. But when God calls you, you got to ask yourself, who's your port? Will you believe? And you've got to get to the place that 
I'm going to walk no matter what it costs me. I'm going to go even if I can't see my way because if God has opened up the door, I've got to walk it through it because he's brought me too far just to leave me now. He's not going to show me that and not see me through it. He's not going to allow me to walk in the ministry and let it fall flat on his face. I've got to trust God with everything that I have. And I am going to shed what's familiar and I'm going to walk by faith. Somebody give God praise right now yeah, yeah. if you're going to do it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, this is what we need to do. I feel the presence of the Lord here. So watch this. Your time of waiting is a time of working. Mm. Number two, you can no longer tolerate what's familiar. Jesus. Oh, point number three is in the text. Look at verse 16 uh, of Luke chapter 4. This first sentence got me. Jesse, he says this. Come on, Pastor. So he came to Nazareth. Yes. Oh, Lord, I feel like preaching this. <laughs> Amen. He came to Nazareth. Yes. Now, when the Bible says Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Uh-huh. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Mm -hmm. See, you have to understand that Jesus was in a place where it was time, it was the appointed time for his earthly ministry to be birthed. Yes. Isn't it amazing that Jesus died at age 33, but his ministry didn't start till age 30? Mm. Mm. Isn't that amazing? amazing? So all this time, he was in Nazareth, but it was the appointed time for him to walk in his ministry, but God brought him out of Nazareth to walk in his ministry, but as he was walking in his ministry, God sent him back to Nazareth. Jesus, Y'all miss it, y'all miss it, y'all miss it. <laughs> Point number three, write this down. God will birth great blessings out of humble beginnings. That's awesome, Pastor. Amen. God will birth great blessings out of humble beginnings. Mm. You have to understand the king of kings and the Lord of Lords was born in a manger. Come on, Pastor. Mm. Where people, where animals would come and eat out of yes. in Bethlehem, uh -huh. a very small, obscure town. Mm -hmm. He was raised in a place called Nazareth, mm -hmm. where when they called Philip to walk with Jesus, Philip asked the question, is there anything good <laughs> that can come out of Nazareth? Yes, sir. Wow. And of all the places for Jesus to be raised, uh -huh. he got raised in a place where they wondered if something good could come out of it. Make it flame, sir. Why would God do that? Here's what I want you to understand. God, watch this, he has a way of birthing great blessings out of humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why you should never be ashamed of where you came from. Yeah, yeah, flame, yeah. See, sometimes we're ashamed of certain points of our story that we don't want people to know about. But God says that part that it might be shameful, I've allowed you to be raised up in that so I can get glory and give you great destiny out of humble beginnings. Yeah. See, here's what you've got to understand about destiny. Oh, I am so excited about where I'm going yes. and I'm thankful for where God is taking me. Yes. You should be thankful for where God is taking you yes. but you should also be thankful where you came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all missed this. Yes, sir. You have to understand. Yep. God is bringing you in to what you came for. Come on, man. Come on. But you first have to be thankful for what you came from. Yes, sir. Yeah. Come, yeah. On, man. Come on, now. Let me say it again. God is bringing you here for what you came for. Uh -huh. But you always have to be thankful for where you came from. Uh -huh. Because here's what you've got to do. Yes. How can something so awesome, so powerful, like a sinless Jesus Christ who came to save the world, how could he come from something so lowly? Yes. And God says, you know what? I've allowed him to be born in Bethlehem in Nazareth so that Bethlehem and Nazareth 
can't take credit for the glory that's going to be revealed in his life. Yes, sir. Oh, who am I talking to? See, sometimes God has given you beginnings and things that happen in a lowly circumstances, but you've got to be thankful for that stuff because truth be told, Jesus came in human form from Bethlehem, but he really wasn't born there. Because the Bible says in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. See, you might have been in a bad part of Atlanta or in an unfortunate position, but the Bible said before you were in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I had already sanctified you. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. So you didn't come from the ghetto. You came from God. You didn't come from that old bunch of fortunate circumstance. You came from God. You didn't come from that bad situation. You came from God. And God wanted to be glorified and say, I can still allow you to be in that bad situation so I can show that bad situation I'm God all by myself. I can allow you to be in that predicament so God can show this predicament I'm God all by myself. So Bethlehem couldn't hold him down. Nazareth couldn't hold him down. Your pain in your past couldn't hold you down. The thing that you went through couldn't hold you down. Your drug addiction couldn't hold you down. Your promiscuity couldn't hold you down because you might have been there, but you're not from there. You're from God. And you have to understand it was just a humble beginning. Because at the end of the day, he's going to bring you out and he's going to send you back. You're going to leave out wounded, but you're going to come back filled with the spirit of the living God. You may come out broken, but you're going to go back home speaking life to peace in that broken situation. You have to understand, sometimes the enemy tries to define you by the word of Nazareth, but God defines you by the word of bless. Somebody give God praise right now. God will birth great blessings yes, out of a humble beginning. So the next time the enemy tries to hold your past over your head, tell the enemy, I'm thankful for where I came from. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, man. Oh, thank you for reminding me about that. Oh, yeah, I forgot. When I was 17, I was off the chain, but I'm yeah. thankful where I came from. Yes. Oh, yeah, I did make that mistake. And God could have ruled me out and cut me off. But guess what, devil? I'm still here in my right mind. I've still got my praise on the inside. And I will be exactly what I'm called to be. Yeah. That's awesome. Jesus. Amen. Watch this. We got to get to the text. We got to get to the text. So we see Jesus comes back yes. to the place he was raised. Yes. And God sent him back. And what they did, you had the, the leaders, the teachers, mm -hmm. would come into the synagogue. Mm -hmm. And what they would do, they would stand up to read. And they would sit down to teach. Yes, sir. Are you seeing this? Yes, sir. Amen. They would stand up to read. And then they would sit down <laughs> to teach. Yes, sir. So watch this. He says, he went to Nazareth. He went to the synagogue, verse 16, on the Sabbath day and stood up to read as the custom was in that day. And he handed, was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And Jesus said, hmm, of all of these books of prophet Isaiah, I'm going to open up to Isaiah 61. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start reading around verse 1. Yes, sir. I think that's a good place to read Jesus' surmised. So what he said, he opened up the book. And you know what it said in the book? So look at verse 18. Come on now. The Spirit of the Lord is. Oh, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. I couldn't read the whole verse, my brothers and sisters, because I got in study. I got hung up right there. Mm -hmm. Tim, it says, the Spirit of the Lord is. Oh, I couldn't get past that point, Michelle, because I was trying to read to the next verse. But I couldn't get past it because God kept hanging me up there and I began to have a shout on the inside because this, before the Spirit of the Lord comes upon me, come on, I have to understand that the Spirit of the Lord is. Yes, yes, yes. Oh! 
What do you mean? Jesus. This is what we've got to understand. Yes. When God is asking you, what are you waiting for? Mm. The thing that he's calling you to do is not for you to go by yourself. Yeah, yeah. The thing that he's calling you to do, the spirit is going with you. Yes. But you can't really walk in the fullness of that mm. until you understand what the spirit of the Lord is. Okay. Mm. You have to understand what it is it and you have to understand that it is. Yes. Yes. I feel like shouting right now. Because when I was in study, I thought about all the times I was insecure about walking in the calling. But God reminded me that the spirit of the Lord is. See, there was times when I didn't want to go out and step out on faith and witness and share my faith with my coworker because I was afraid of what they were going to say to me. But then I was reminded that the spirit of the Lord is. What is the spirit of the Lord? See, the spirit of the Lord is the greatest authority that's on the earth right now that the enemy cannot defeat. The spirit of the Lord is the thing that protects you and provides and keeps you like never before when you can't keep yourself. The spirit of the Lord is that thing that's dwelling inside of you, that's guiding you to all truth, that's changing your heart, that is changing your mindset and going before you. The spirit of the Lord is, is the same spirit that made the blind man see. It's the same spirit that made the lame man walk. It's the same spirit that made the issue of the blood go away. It was the same spirit that sinned, that cleansed ten lepers. It was the same spirit that healed the hand with the withered hand. It was the same spirit that when Jesus told the woman, woman thou art loose, she had to stand up straight because the spirit of the Lord is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm. Make it plain, sir. Jesus. See, too many Christians spend all their time talking about what your problem is. I don't care about what your problem is if I know what the spirit is. It doesn't matter about your storm and what that is. It doesn't matter about the, the giant, about what that is. Let's talk about the spirit and what it is. You can't lose when you're under the spirit of God. You can't go backwards when you're under the spirit of God. You can't go back and turn back when you're under the spirit of God. Because whenever the spirit of the Lord is on you, he's going to move and accomplish his will. All you got to do is say yes. And I'm so thankful of what the spirit of the Lord is, but I'm also thankful that the spirit of the Lord is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Woo, somebody say amen. amen. Oh, God. Point number one. Confidence in your calling is connected to dependence on God's spirit. Confidence in your calling is connected to dependence on God's spirit. See, here's what you've got to understand. If you don't have God's spirit, you can't have no confidence. But if you're called to do something and you've got the spirit of God on you and in you, now you can have complete confidence. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because there is no failure in God. Mm -hmm. Somebody just hear what I said? Amen. Somebody is hesitating even in this pandemic time to step out because you're afraid of failure. But the truth be told is there is no failure in God there is. because the spirit of the Lord is. Yes. And you have to understand when you go, God goes with you. And what you can't do by yourself, God does through you. When you can't do on your own, God steps in and makes a way through you. Yes. Are you seeing it? That's what the Bible says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So watch this. Confidence in your calling is connected to dependence on God's spirit. Mm -hmm. Woo! Point number two. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has appointed me. Watch this. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me 
to heal the brokenhearted. Y'all missed that. I'm going to read it again. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Are you saying it? Mm -hmm. To preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Here's what you got to understand about the Spirit. Are y'all reading your Bible with me? Amen. It says, he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. But he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Somebody say anointed. anointed. Somebody say sent. sent. Y'all see it? Yes, sir. He has anointed me to preach. But he has sent me to heal. Here's what we got to understand. The anointing is the Greek word kreo, which means to rub or to smear with oil. Mm. It also means to consecrate to an office or a service. So he has the anointing. Stay with me, y'all. Mm -hmm. He was anointed to preach, but then the Bible says he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. The word sent is the Greek word apostolos, where we get the word apostle. Mm. And the word apostle means sent ones. Mm. Here's the key about the anointing. You have to understand he could be anointed all day, but the power wasn't going to go until he was sent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Make it plain, mm. sir. I, 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 y'all seeing it? Yeah. I, I want to make this clear. Because there's too many people in Christ celebrating their anointing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I celebrate your anointing too, but what kind of power is it yielding if you didn't go? Ooh, That's geez. awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Y'all seeing it? That's awesome. mm -hmm. This is the time and this is the place where in this modern Christianity, everybody talk about how anointed they are. Yeah. That's my anointing. Mm -hmm. I'm on the anointing of the bishop, and I'm walking with my anointing. I'm like so anointed, you know what I mean? Anointed and anointed, yes. Oh, anointing, fall on me, fall on me. Let your manifesting glory fall on me. Uh huh. And you see all of these things being put out there in modern circles. Yeah, yeah. But the key with the anointing is not just having the oil, mm -hmm. but go where you were sent. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go where you were sent. Can I remind somebody of something? The anointing is not for you to feel warm and fuzzy. Come on, Pastor. The anointing is for you to complete the assignment that yes, God sir. gave you. Yes, sir. The anointing is not for you to feel good about yourself and walk out of church because we had church and we were under the anointing. No, the anointing was for the specific assignment that he called you to. This is why he said he was anointed to preach to the gospel to the poor. Yes. But he was sent. So here's the thing. The anointing doesn't kick in until you go. Oh, Jesus. Are you seeing this? Yes, sir. It doesn't kick in until you go. Uh -huh. I was researching. I thought this would be good because a lot of my brothers are in the house in the room. So I'm real excited about that. I was researching some of the, the greatest rebounders <laughs> of all time. I saw number one, Will Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Number two, Bill Russell. Uh -huh. Number three, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Uh -huh. And I said it made sense that they would be top rebounders because they were pretty tall. Yes, sir. Huh? Uh -huh. They were seven footers. Uh -huh. Bill Russell right up in there close to it, seven feet. But as I look at the top 25 Rebounders, stay with me. Yes, sir. I saw a name on there by the name of Wes Unseld. Come on, fam. some of y'all have no idea who Wes Unseld is. Some of y'all young bucks don't understand the Washington Bullets. But Wes Unseld was in the top 25 of all time rebounds, but he wasn't seven feet. In fact, he was only six foot seven. You know who else was in top 25 in rebounds? This man that goes by the name of Round Mound of Rebound by the name of Charles Barkley, amen, amen. who was listed at six foot six, but probably was about six foot four. You know also in the top 25 was a man by the name of The Worm, Dennis Rodman, uh -huh. wasn't seven feet, and I wondered, they aren't as tall as some of the other people, so how come 
they got so many rebounds. Come here, Chris. Come here, Chris. Amen. Because what I've come to discover, and I want you to understand this. See, Chris is taller than me. Yes. So you would think that he would be able to get the rebound over me. Yes, sir. But if I do something like this, yes, sir. I end up boxing him out. Yes, sir. And I end up getting in position. Yes. So now when the ball comes, even though he was taller than me, I may get the rebound because I was in the right position. Yes, sir. Who am I talking to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you have to understand yeah. it's not the anointing. It's not about how tall you are. It's about you getting in position. Come on now. The anointing is not about how gifted you are, but it's about you being in position. See, the anointing is not about how many degrees you got, but it's about you getting in position. And there are many people who are gifted, but they don't walk in the anointing because they don't get in position. And you have to understand that everybody in this room has an enemy trying to take something from them. Yeah. But I don't care how big the enemy is, when you stand in your rightful position, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden you receive what you're supposed to have. Yeah. You walk in what you're supposed to have. The power of God will come through your life and you'll be able to position yourself for the anointing. Yeah. This is why it's very critical in order for you to flow to what you have to flow in, you got to be in position. Yes, yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So point number two, God releases his power when you get in position. Yeah, yeah. God releases his power when you get in position. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why it says, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. This is a word for the all lives matter crowd. <laughs> Did y'all see it? I'm going to read it again. If you believe all lives matter, I want you to see this. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Are you seeing what I'm saying? This is a word for all lives matter people because Jesus didn't only come to preach to those people. He claimed to preach to the other people that were not listed. But just because they were not listed don't mean they don't matter. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Black lives matter. No, all lives matter. Are you seeing it? Yes, sir. Yes, we understand that all lives matter. But truth be told, we have to send attention because there's an urgency because these people are being killed. So we're focusing on Black Lives Matter. And it's not an expense of your issue, but we need to focus on this issue because this issue needs to be changed. Amen. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And this is what we're doing. Hallelujah. Now we get to the last point. We're going to go home here. Watch this. The Bible says, verse 20, then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were on him were fixed on him. And he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Yes. Now, isn't this awesome? He went back to Nazareth where he was brought up. He read the word and he declared that what you just read in the Bible is me. <laughs> Amen. That's awesome. That thing that I just read in Isaiah, what's up? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm here. Uh -huh. And the Bible says he dropped the mic. And he didn't <laughs> drop the mic. He, he didn't drop the mic. He, he went and he sat down. And he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And you know what they did? <laughs> They gave him a standing ovation. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What Bible are you reading? Wouldn't it be nice if the end of the story said, wow, Jesus, we're so proud of you. You've come so far. Wow, look at you. You're all anointed now. Yes. You're fulfilling scripture right now. Yes. Look at you. That's not how the story ends. No, no. If you continue to read your Bible, the Bible said they marveled at his words. But then they started thinking to themselves, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. That was pretty deep, Jesus, but 
Isn't that the carpenter's son? Uh -huh. Isn't that the dude that fell off his bike when he was six years old? Come on, Pastor. <laughs> Isn't that that dude that kept falling down and acting crazy? What? Isn't that him? Uh -huh. And now you're talking about this scripture is fulfilled? Mm. Nah, bro. Nah. Mm. And the thing is, the people that raised him yes. were the same people that rejected him. Mm. Yes. The people that were familiar with him. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to get rid of something familiar. Yeah. Were the same people that couldn't handle the anointing. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't go back there to work miracles because there was no faith. Because all they could see was the man and not the Messiah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's what we've got to understand. There's a lesson here. Because somebody is going to get sent back to minister somewhere. And you're going to be obedient. But you might get rejected. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the solution. Point number three, and we're going home. Point number three, we must be delivered from counterfeit confirmation. Amen. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. We must be delivered from counterfeit confirmation. What do you mean? See, Jesus went to Nazareth, but Nazareth couldn't get past of who they thought he was and they didn't receive him. Therefore, they rejected him and tried to kill him. But the Bible said he escaped at the end of chapter 4 and he gets out of there. If Jesus would have taken what the people of Nazareth had said, he could have crawled up in a corner and said, oh, I can't preach because the people don't receive me. Am I, are y'all getting where I'm going? But you know what Jesus did? When they rejected him at Nazareth, he went out and he kept preaching. Because the men didn't call him, but God called him. And who I'm talking to today? There's somebody right now that you are doing what God has called you to do. And there's somebody close to you that's rejecting you. But can I tell you, you've got to be delivered from counterfeit confirmation. Counterfeit confirmation takes place is when you value the opinions of others over the word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Counterfeit confirmation takes place when you're looking for validation from your friends and not by your faith. Counterfeit confirmation takes place when you're looking for people to pat you on the back and tell you how good you are because you're doing what you're supposed to do. Can I give you a news flash? Sometimes if you're doing what God has called you to do, you might be talked about. You might be mistreated, but you might as well keep on preaching. Some people might not be able to understand how you're walking in that power, but you might as well keep on preaching. Because you have to understand, your confirmation doesn't come from people. Your confirmation comes from God. Your confirmation doesn't come from people's opinions. Your confirmation comes from who God said you were before the foundation of the world. Am I talking to somebody right here? And you've got to realize and understand that counterfeit confirmation is when you want ears and people to tell you what you want to hear. But even if you reject me, I'm thankful that God accepted me. Even when you told me no, I'm glad that God told me yes. Even when you told me that I would never make it, God told me I was more than a conqueror. When even you told me that it wasn't going to work out, God told me that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Whenever you counted me out, God had already counted me in. Am I talking to somebody right here? So I suggest that you continue to keep preaching. You continue to keep praying. You continue to keep walking in your anointing. You continue to keep walking in your calling. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? And if I've got 10 people telling me no, I'm glad I got one telling me yes. If I got 20 people telling me no, I'm glad I got one telling me yes. I'm, and I'm glad if I got 30 people saying I'll never make it, but God said you're already the head and not the tail. I'll repeat the Lord, uh, the report of the Lord, and I will walk in my calling all day and night. It's time in 2020 that you get delivered from counterfeit confirmation. Somebody say amen. 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 Stop looking at your friend circle to validate you in your identity. Amen. Stop looking at your job to determine who you are. Mm. You might be working minimum wage, 
but you are high powered in the spirit. You might have came from a humble beginning and nobody else went to college, but you go in there and you keep preaching and teaching the word of God because the favor of God rests upon you. And you have to understand, I think T.D. Jake said it best, favor is never fair. Yes. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. And favor attracts two things. It attracts open doors and it attracts haters. Which one are you going to focus on? Because whenever you got God's favor, every open door is going to be right there and you'll be able to go through and you'll be able to move up and you'll be able to walk in promotion as you're doing the will of God. But you'll also have the enemy's presence wishing that you never did it. Try to talk you out of who you are. And the question becomes, will you trust counterfeit confirmation? Or when you just walk in who God called you to be. Somebody say amen. amen. I believe in this room. I believe on this online that God is raising up people who are not ashamed of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And no matter what it costs them, they're going to go. Is there somebody right here right now that you have decided to follow Jesus no matter what it costs you? Is there somebody here that's saying, you know what? No matter what may take place, no matter who may disown me or talk about me behind my back, I've got to go because it's a life or death situation. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I come against the spirit of people pleasing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I come against that foul spirit of trying to make everybody happy and conform to other people's vision of you. I come against it right now in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. Mm -hmm. You were not made to fit in. You were meant to fit out. Yes, sir. <laughs> you were not made to blend in with the world. You were made to be an original. Yeah. Yes, sir. And the Lord has put an anointing in your life. Yes, sir. Because the oppressed are out there. Yes. The brokenhearted are out there. And the bruised are out there. This is why you've got to be thankful of where you come from. Because before God calls you to heal the brokenhearted, sometimes he allows your heart to be broken first. Yes. Amen. Amen. Before he uses you to be a healer, he allows you to be sick first. Before he calls you to be a vessel of freedom and liberty, he might call you to be oppressed first. Because when he gives you your calling. He gives you the heart for your calling. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the heart comes through the hurt. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear what I said? Amen. Sometimes, listen to me, God gives you the heart through your hurt. And it's through your hurt that gives you the heart to speak to the hurt. Are you saying this? Yes, sir. And I want to talk to somebody right now. There's somebody here. God is asking you, what are you waiting for? Yep, you might not be ready, but the spirit of the living God is ready. Amen. You're seeing how the world is setting. And according to biblical prophecy, we're going to continue down a certain road. But God is saying, I've called you. I've called you for a time such as this. Because it's time for you to stand up and proclaim the gospel. Stand up and be a light. And the question is, what are you waiting for? Amen. Somebody give God praise right now. You receive that word today. Listen, I want to talk to somebody and we're speaking to somebody's heart right now. If there's somebody here that you've been struggling in that you walk in shame and walking in guilt, God says he loves you. Jesus loves you. He knows your name. He's calling you by name, even now, to come out of darkness, come out of where you are into a relationship with Jesus Christ. He loves you with an everlasting love, and he's calling you now to walk in a relationship with Jesus Christ. All you've got to do is say yes. You don't have to go home and get right and get yourself straight. Let God do it. He says, come as you are. Every hurt, every pain, every broken place, everything that you can't figure out, bring it all to Jesus and let him work it out in your life. Amen. All he says is this. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. He says, you shall be saved because it's not his will that anybody should perish 
Everybody should pass away. But he wants to be in relationship with you and he's calling you by name. So if you're watching this today and you want to be in relationship with Jesus Christ, just type on the, on the screen, I want to give my life to Christ. Just, just inbox us, I want to give my life to Christ. And God is going to receive you with open arms because he loves you, he created you, and there's a plan for your life. If there's somebody here that needs to rededicate your life, you can do it now. Whether it's out there or even in this room, somebody need to rededicate their life. You're saying, you know what, Lord, I'm tired of doing it by myself. I'm tired of doing things my way. Things are not working out. I need you. If you're someone that is crying out, God hears your cry. There's not no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. He's not judging you for what you did or whatever took place. He's coming to you with open arms saying, come back home, my son. Come back home, my daughter. And God is going to make it right for you. So if you want to rededicate your life, you can just say, Pastor, I want to rededicate my life. Right on the screen, I want to rededicate my life. You can inbox us. I want to rededicate. I want to, I want to get this thing right. I want to walk the right way. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God will walk with you. We will walk with you. And we're praising God for you now. If there's somebody who wants to join Freedom Movement Church, it's the third invitation. If somebody wants to join Freedom Movement Church, the church is alive and well, and we will be blessed to have you as part of this family. You are anointed. You are blessed. There's so many great things that God is doing in your life, and there's room here. There's so much kingdom work to be done, and you have amazing gifts that God wants to use for a time such as this. So if you're here and want to uh, join Freedom Movement Church, come on. Whether you're here in Georgia, out of state, out of the country, wherever you are, we'd love to have you. Is there someone you can write on the screen that I want to join Freedom Movement Church? There's a movement taking place, and you have a great part to play. God wants to use you for his glory like never before. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we do this? Let's everybody hear this. Let's stand together. Let's stand together. I want to pray for someone that, that may is. is, is God is, is leading them to give their life to Christ or lead to rededicate their life to Christ and join the Freedom Movement Church. We want to pray for you now. We're believing that the power of God will begin to just move and that he would just open up your heart that there will be no distractions that you will make a decision to give your all, give your life to God. Christ, it's your greatest decision you could ever make. Tomorrow's not promised, Amen. but thanks be to God you have right now. Yes, sir. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor and glory. Thank you, God, for your word, Lord God, that goes forth. Lord, you're asking us, what are you waiting for? And thank you, God, that, I, that there are people here that you're calling by name, Lord God, to draw closer to you. But, Lord, that you would open up every heart, open up every mind, open up every ear to hear you right now, that they would receive you completely and totally as their Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus. So we look to you. We need you. We honor you. We bless you, Lord God. But Lord, that you would move right now, that there will be a heart shift that would take place in Jesus' name. Lord, that we move right now, that you would have your way and be glorified like never before in Jesus' name. So Lord, have your way, move by the power of your spirit, and we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Somebody said amen. amen. Clap your hands one more time and give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Before we go, it's offering time. It's time to give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has been so good to us. And God has been moving in such a way in our hearts and our lives. This is the time that we would sow back into the kingdom of God uh, all that he's, he's blessed us with. This is the time that we would uh, begin to give um, unto him. I don't know about you, but I'm blessed just to, to be able to, to have breath in my body. And blessed to be able to, to come into church and lift my hands and give God glory. And we have so many things that God has blessed us with homes and vehicles and, and, and jobs and so many different things. But whatever we have, we have Jesus and we're so grateful. So we are a giving, we're a, gener uh, we're a generous church. We give out of identity, it's who we are. Uh, whatever we give our time and our talent and our treasure, it all belongs to him. But we are a tithing church. Somebody say amen. amen. The Bible says bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. 10% of what God has blessed us. He said, bring the whole time to the storehouse. There will be meat in my house. 
Test me now, prove me, though, and not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessing you have not room enough to receive. And he promised, I shall rebuke the devourer for your sake. And I believe that God is going to move and God is going to bless in your gifts and your offerings. Amen. The church will be blessed, but that even your home will be blessed like never before. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. While we're giving, listen, I just, uh, I want to just say thank you, thank you, thank you uh, to the kingdom women. Uh, man, can we give God praise for kingdom women? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's celebrate in there. Let's give God praise for the kingdom women. Hallelujah. 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 We had our Men of Valor Bible class today, today and it was a major blessing. The brothers came together. But the brothers ate good too, amen? Because yeah, the women, the, the kingdom women, they, they stepped up and they said they wanted to, to bless us for breakfast, and it was amazing. And uh, we just thank God uh, just for our women, uh, just for the blessing they are. And I thank God again uh, for our men of God. Listen, a couple of announcements. We're about to go down from this place. Uh, first announcement is today yes. at 4 o'clock p.m. Hallelujah. We're going to, uh, we're going to do an outreach. Uh, at a nursing home, amen. This is the FMC worship experience. Yeah. It's going down, yeah. amen. Yeah. This is the time that we're just going to show up yes. and we're going to sing praises to God. Amen. Hallelujah. There's so many people who are, who are depressed and so many people who are hurting and they, and they just need joy and need peace. And we want to come and there's going to be a group of us that just want to come and we're just going to sing praises to God and we're going to connect uh, with the people there. We're going to be in Woodstock. It's uh, Legacy Ridge. Is, is, is that it? Legacy Ridge? Yes, yes. Legacy Ridge in Woodstock at uh, 4 o'clock. Uh, we asked if you're coming that you would meet at 3 o'clock here at uh, Freedom Movement Church. We're going to meet, meet here 3 p.m. at uh, Freedom Movement Church and we're going to bring our praise. We're going to have the Sopranos going to be there, the altos, the tenors, the I don't know toes going to be there, the baritones, the bass, Whatever toes going to happen, and it's going to be a time where it's not about being in the choir, but it's about having a song in your heart. Amen. If you have a song in your heart, we want you to come. Yes, sir. And it's going to be an awesome thing. And don't forget about this Wednesday, 3 o'clock p.m., we're going to be starting a series called Unity in the Body, where we're coming together with pastors across a racial and denominational lines to talk a real talk about race. Real talk about racial reconciliation. Real talk about what our calling is as a church. Uh, to move forward in this and what we're supposed to do. Join us on Facebook Live, 3 o'clock on a Wednesday, and uh, we believe the Lord is going to speak and bless us like never before. Listen, we're going to go home. Let's pray out right now. Let's pray out right now. Does everybody stand to your feet? We're going to pray out right now. We love you so much, Freedom Movement Church, and we look forward to what God is doing. We call your week blessed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We praise you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard, and what our hearts have felt. Lord, we thank you, God, that, that you allowed us to have an urgency, an unprecedented urgency that we've never had in our life. And you're calling us to move according to, to what your plan is, God. And we ask that you would even use these times to light a fire under us, Lord God, that we would move boldly in our calling, in the ministry, in our kingdom business. Whatever you've called us to do, help us to do it, Lord God. Help us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor would not be in vain. Lord, raise up leaders, Lord God, after your own heart. Raise up preachers, Lord God. Raise up workers. Raise up servers, Lord God. Raise up prayer warriors in this time that you would move in your body of Christ, that we would go out and be a blessing in a dark world, Lord God, that we would, that you would have your way in Jesus' name. So, Lord, keep us like we could never be kept. And we'd be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. 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 Help somebody tell them what you love them. God bless you, Freedom Movement Church. <laughs>